going to attempt one final time to make this video. I think I have probably tried to make this video about five times and each time something happens I have to pause my phone or um, something. Anyway, <laughs> I came across this story a few days ago on the website Reddit and on Unsolved Appalachia. Missing, murdered, unidentified, but not forgotten. And this story stuck out to me because of the location where this took place, where this happened. But Christina Lynn Carter, age three, lived with her single mother, Janet Gale Calhoun Carter, in Hueytown, Alabama. Her parents had only recently gotten a divorce about two months prior, and her father was seeking full custody of Christina. It is thought that Janet went into hiding with Christina because of the custody battle that was about to erupt. September the 17th, 1973 was the last time that anyone can remember seeing Christina or her mother. I'm going to maybe... So, September 17th, 1973 was the last time that anyone can remember seeing the two of them. On October the 7th, 1973, a nude body of a woman was found inside a duffel bag on Clingman's Dome Road in Bryson City, North Carolina, in the Great Smoky Mountains. Now, that's what caught my attention about this story, was Bryson City, um, Clingman's Dome is an overlook in the Smoky Mountains. It's a big observation tower. There's a big parking area. I don't know if there's, I, I know that there is like a visiting center with some bathrooms and stuff, but I don't know if there's a gift shop or what at the base of the road where you have to walk up to, to the tower. The road itself is a paved road that is basically uphill pretty much the whole way and it's about a mile up to the tower then you cross over the like a bridge type of thing to the observation tower and it's you can just they say that you can see the entire smoky mountains from up there you can see uh, just forever and but the reason I'm bringing that up is because it is it is in the Smoky Mountains National Park as you're crossing from Tennessee over into North Carolina towards Cherokee. And there's really nothing much around it other than this big tower, um, some campsites and things nearby. But So anyway, that just caught my attention because I love Bryson City. It's a small little town in North Carolina in the Smoky Mountains. It's quaint. It's kind of off of the beaten path. But anyway, back to this story. Her nude body was found inside of a duffel bag, and she had been suffocated. Authorities believe she had only been dead a few hours when her body was discovered. So let's jump back to the fact that she had not been seen for three weeks. And I'm going to tell a little bit more about what... Um, Let's put this up there like that, but it makes it too dark. I want to tell a little bit more about what authorities believe might have been going on in that three weeks. Um, could Janet possibly have given the child to someone for safekeeping? It took the FBI and local authorities almost a month to identify the Jane Doe as Janet Carter through her dental records and x-rays. This means that for one full month, the police and the FBI had no idea that there was a, even a child involved here, so they were not searching for a child. Um, I don't know if they went to the local news and, and showed pictures of this woman or gave a description, but they said that no one came forward and that there was no reports of a missing person with her, you know, with her uh, features and such. So nobody was coming forward. Eventually, her mother came forward with um, 
a description of her daughter and said that she was believed to be in the Smoky Mountains. Um, so let's jump ahead. On the popular website Web Sleuths, a user named Marty Lee says she is Christie's cousin on her father's side. After doing some digging on the internet, I was able to locate some more information, and I believe that she is who she, who she says she is. She made an interesting post regarding Janet, and I'm going to copy it here so you can read it in its full context. Now this next part is from the cousin of this girl. Forgive me for being sketchy about some things, but I'm trying to protect the privacy of my family. Christy's father is my cousin. He is waiting to give DNA samples. I'll be sure to post it here when that happens. Plans are to contact Christy's biological grandmother in another state for a sample. Now, I don't know if they're giving samples just because all of a sudden they decided... Let's give our DNA samples so we can put them into GEDmatch or um, some of the genealogy databases in the event that she's still alive and someday seeks her identity. Or they have found a body or some bones or something like that and are hoping to get a match. I don't know. That isn't mentioned here. But that's why that they were given their DNA samples. She goes on to say, We have always felt like we knew who killed Janet. At the time, she was dating a married man and talked to her co-workers about being excited about going to the Smoky Mountains with him. I can't go into all of the details, but at the time, we just all assumed that that was where she was. When her body was later discovered there, we felt for sure that he was involved. We do know that he was in the area the morning she died, but his wife provided him with an alibi. He died a couple of years ago, so we will probably never get to the story of what happened that night and that morning. Um, what we don't know is, if he was the one who killed Janet, what did he do with Christy? Did he kill her and dispose of her body? Did wild animals get to her body? No clothing or anything was ever found. Police never had any reason to believe that the child had been there where the mother was found. Um, did someone take her and give her to someone you know, this is a theory. One theory is, is that the the mother took the child and gave her to someone that she trusted to babysit while she was off on this wild adventure with her married boyfriend. Uh, or one theory also on Reddit, one person asked the question, is it possible the father discovered where she was at and went there? But... Keep in mind, the man, the married man, was known known to have been in this area the night before her body was discovered and that morning as well. I don't know how they, if he was staying in a local hotel or what the story is. They don't go into detail about that. But it just says, um, no one was looking for Christy for over a month because no one knew the identity of Janet. Once her identity was discovered, they began to ask questions. But by this time, hotel rooms had been cleaned out. Um, dumpsters had been cleaned out. And no one really knew. But I'm going to jump ahead here just for a second. She wasn't known to have been staying in a hotel. Um, the story is and I'll get to this in a second, was that this man supposedly had a cabin and he was letting her stay there <clears throat> so that she could avoid this custody battle, which doesn't make any sense because eventually she was going to be, you know, having to come back and face the judge. But anyway, it goes on to say, um, 
I wonder who the man was that she, the married man was that she was seeing at the time of her disappearance. It's unfortunate to believe that a wife would give a false alibi for a man, knowing that a woman had been murdered and that the three-year-old child was missing. Um, could it, is it possible that she was also involved in this murder? Could be. She might have come out there and caught her husband with this woman, and, you know, maybe he was covering for her. Who knows? At this point, no one knows what happened to Christina. If if she was murdered, her body has never been discovered. No clothing or any other identifiable remains have ever been found. A woman came forward many years later and said that she believed she may be Christina. However, after doing testing, it was discovered that she was identified as Suzanne Marie Savakis. I guess she was another child that had gone missing. I'll look that up next. But this all came from the website Unsolved Appalachia. Now I'm going to jump on over here to another one that goes into a little bit more detail um, about some things that are not mentioned in this article. And this is from the website Talk Murder to Me. What happened to Christina Lynn Carter? Christina Lynn Carter went missing September 17, 1973. If she is still alive, she would be 52 years old today. She may not even know her true identity. Theories are is that the mother gave her to someone for safekeeping, and she may have been raised as someone else's child. Um, possibly by someone in the mother's family. That's just a theory. No one in her family has ever come forward and said. And you know, at this point, this woman would would have heard about this, maybe. Um, anyway, let's, there is a podcast called Listen to Christina Lynn Carter on Spreaker. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. I'm going to listen to that in a minute if I can find it. Sometimes these podcasts are taken off after so long. Is it possible that Janet was hiding out? Several newspapers that covered Christina's disappearance described her mother, Janet Gail Carter, as a troubled young woman. At the age of 24, Janet was on her second divorce and going through a bitter, ongoing custody battle with her ex-husband. At the time, Janet was employed in a low-paying job in an insurance agency in Birmingham, Alabama. She was involved in a romantic, secretive relationship with a married man whose true identity was never confirmed. But now the police did speak to this man because his wife provided him with an alibi, people that she worked with are reported to know who he was because she was bragging about how he was going to take her away on this trip. And um, so people knew who he was, but he was ne his name was never put out. As far as I know, I couldn't find anything about it in the media. because, But he's passed away since then, so... Um, he died a few years after Christina's disappearance, and it says here, of unrelated causes. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Um, Christina was never found, and her mother was suffocated and stuffed into a duffel bag naked, so I'm sure that's not how he died. So I don't know what that even means, unrelated causes. Janet Carter did not want to give up custody of her only child to her ex-husband of five years. But she knew that the court would side. If, okay, think about this for a second. She was married to this man for five years. They had just divorced. That would have made her 19 at the time that, that she married him. And he was her second husband. So I don't think she had any other children with 
uh, prior to him. It says her only child. The court, she knew that the court, her, her lawyers were telling her, and she knew that the court was going to side with her ex-husband. By September of 1973, the pressure from her lawyers was mounting. Chris, Janet Lynn Carter saw no other choice but to take her daughter and go into hiding. The married man she was secretly seeing, he is, he is reported, I don't know who told this, if she told some of her co-workers or some of her family members this, but it is reported that the married man she was secretly seeing had a small cabin in the Great Smoky Mountains and was allow, and was going to allow her and her daughter to stay there. If she was going to go there and hide out, why would she tell anybody? You know, why would, why, that doesn't really make any sense. And she wasn't telling her co-workers, according to them, that she was going there to hide out. She told them that she was going there on this weekend, you know, this vacation with this man. I don't know if she told them she was taking her daughter with her or leaving her with a babysitter or, you know. Her mother lived in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and she was in Alabama. Um, I don't know how far Winston-Salem is from Bryson City. I guess it's probably a couple of hours. On October the 7th, local fisher... Local fishers found a duffel bag about 50 feet from Clingman's Dome Road in Bryson City, North Carolina. They thought it might contain camping equipment as there are quite a few camping areas in the camping sites in the area. But upon opening the bag, they found a dead body of a nude woman who had been suffocated. Uh, her hands were taped across her chest I guess they're talking about like this um, I guess whoever did this had to tape her up I guess to stuff her into this bag Janet's hands were taped across her chest and the medical examiner ruled that she died from asphyxiation within the last three days of being discovered the problem the Bryson City Police Department and the FBI faced was identifying the remains. There were no identifiable marks on Janet, such as tattoos or anything like that. Her purse, driver's license, and all, and no other belongings were in the bag with her. No active missing persons reports fit her features. And all authorities could do was wait until a family member came forward to identify her body. I'm assuming that they had gone on to the local TV stations because there are some stories from Kingsport and Knoxville newspapers, but you can't unlock them unless you have a subscription. So I couldn't find what they had posted. I'm sure that they had... Um, put out a story about this woman's body being found and maybe I didn't, you know, gave a description. But eventually, Mrs. Lucille Coker of Winston-Salem, Janet's mother, came forward and identified her daughter. She said that she had at least one week phone call with her daughter but had not heard from her in weeks. She contacted the Great Smoky Mountain Police Station. She told them that she believed her daughter to be in the Smoky Mountains and that she had not heard from her in weeks. When they, they asked her if she could provide them with x-rays and dental records, they were able to identify Janet Lynn Carter as the, as the murder victim and now they were made aware of the disappearance of the child. See, they, the police had no idea. When they were in the newspapers posting the, or, you know, reporting this stuff, they weren't saying we're looking for a missing child because they didn't know about that. So Wallace Estel was an FBI agent who worked on this case, said that he believed 
Janet was alive and in the park the morning of the morning hours of October the seventh, but sometime during the early morning hours she was murdered, and the boyfriend was reported to have been in the Smoky Mountains that morning as well. I don't. Um, the first task the authorities needed to do was to interview the married man who Janet was romantically involved with. Um, the family fully believed that this married man was involved in her murder and that his wife helped to cover this up by giving him a false alibi. The reason that they didn't investigate her disappearance sooner was lots of details I can't go into, but at the time we all assumed they were in hiding. Police positively placed the married man in the same general area as Janet when she was murdered. I don't really see anything else on here. Um, age, I guess that's all there is to it. That doesn't really go into any more detail than anything else. I find nothing from the father's side of the family. It's pretty much the same stuff over and over again. Here's something from the Doe Network, which is basically just a description of her and what she might look like today um, <clears throat> that's pretty much all I can find about this after all these years it may never be the truth may never come out about this I believe that they let a killer walk of course they did like I was telling about this, this Faria, this man who went to prison, who was innocent, he was brought in and questioned over for hours on end with no let up by the police. They kept just accusing him um, without any evidence. And then you take someone like this who was in the area, was known to be having an affair with her, um, and he was, was he questioned at all? What little bit of questioning he was, his wife comes in and says, oh, he was at home with me, or he was, we were together in, in the hotel or whatever, or the cabin. Did they search the cabin? Was there ever really even a cabin? I don't know. But I just wanted to share that story, and if there's ever any updates on Reddit or any of the other websites, I will do an update. Thank you for watching.